Hello and welcome to episode number eight. It's been a while. In this episode, I'm going to do something quite different. I'm actually going to showcase a few art techniques. This first technique I'm showcasing has two names. It's called line of action and it's also called dynamism. This technique is made by another artist called Enzio. I'll put a link to his page in my description. I can also credit the artist Enzio in my conversation right now, so there's that as well. The problem with me is I did not show any kind of technique like this in earlier episodes. For instance, in episode 1 of this, I didn't use the circle and plus face technique, which a lot of high level artists use. And I didn't use that. I went straight in and drew my character's face line in. Then the hair and eyes and such, when other artists would do it, the rough version first. It's mainly because I've been making art since the 1990s. So since I've been doing art for that long, that's why I didn't do it the rough way first. Right, okay, here's another technique by someone called QT Patrol. I'm going to test how good this is. QT Patrol says you can use cube boxes to map out where the character's hips and torso goes before drawing out those body parts. Also, you can use the box method to map out where the shoulders go as well. The problem with this method is Cube Patrol showcases techniques on female characters, not male characters. Meaning I don't know if this would work on my male characters like N, Hiroshi or Taji. Don't worry about this looking rough because I have done this before with these N and Majumi images I made in the past. A friend of mine offline said the rough version still looks very good and that rough version took me about 45 odd minutes, something like that anyway. The colour version on the left definitely took me at least 3 hours. So yeah, <laughs> that took me a while to draw up. Oh yeah, watch out. I just realised my character's legs are crossed the wrong way. Whoopsie! Now for the circle and cross technique, this existed back in school library books I read back in the 1990s. Now people are probably going to be asking me, how did you get into making art videos? Back in 2010, I came across Mark Crilly. He's very good at physical drawing. Mark got me into this, but I do digital animations instead. So yeah, I'm going to delete the boxes and the cross face drafts off, because I've already done the coloured version of UA already. I just need to complete her legs. Okay, so there's a third technique I can showcase. And credit goes to some normal artist. He's quite famous, but not as famous as Mark Crilly. Some normal artist says we can mirror flip our characters round and detect errors. Oh my word, her face looks kind of strange. Believe it or not, I was expecting Yua to look way worse than this. Thing is though, Yua's hair is asymmetrical, so of course her hair is going to look a tiny bit strange on this side. The best thing about the mirror flip technique is this can apply to male characters as well. Whereas the box method I mentioned earlier seems to work for girl torsos on hips. That's it. So I do apologise QT Patrol, but I think NCO's line of action technique is better I think. Right, let's uh, change our colour. Um, I personally think having different colours actually helps because I did explain this in an old tutorial from a few years back and it's where, um, yeah I'm going to draw this in blocks by the way and it's where colour coding helps because then when you have lines cross each other and you just double click it you'll be double clicking what's the same colour so that's actually quite helpful. It's different for each program art program anyway, but if this flash people would be probably be asking me why are you drawing in flash when it's supposed to be animation based because it's pretty obvious I'm actually gonna animate this character in future episodes yes I'm actually gonna do that so yeah <laughs> uh, I think drawing in blocks is a brilliant idea 
Um, don't worry about how it looks at the moment, I can always uh, make it look better afterwards. Trust me, this light does not look very good right now, but a lot better. Um, let's have a look. This is at times four speed, so what you're hearing is actually times one speed in speech. So yeah, I'm probably going to change that knee because you wouldn't have a knee facing forwards, whereas the shoe is um, facing diagonally left. <laughs> so yeah, that knee's totally going to change. Right. Um, I'm going to draw my character's uh, boot buckle in. It's quite detailed though. I've actually drawn this uh, one buckle in before. Well, the bottom of a shoe is before because of this picture here that I made. So, yeah. And <laughs> um, there's going to be a few circles I need to put on here as well. No, this is totally not going to look good at first. At first, obviously. So I think drawing it rough is one of the best strategies I think. I've been doing it that way even off screen anyway because then you can detect errors. I will say that when some normal artist said oh flip your image around I tested it out just like a few minutes ago and it's like it actually does help but I don't think it would actually help at every single picture ever especially if it's like non-characters like mountains or something. <laughs> so yeah. Alright, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be moving these stroke lines around a lot. <laughs> like left, right, left, right sort of thing. It's because I have to look at it afterwards, think, does this look right? If not, change it. <laughs> right. I will say that the line of action thing by NCO has definitely been helpful. Because look how close the boot is to that. <laughs> the other day, I was talking to people offline about TikTok videos. I know some people uh, are like have cringy eyes whenever they hear the word TikTok, right? Yeah, I don't think TikTok's that good anyway. And it's where um, people have been asking me, why don't you make a TikTok account, right? A lot of people have been asking me this. The reason why I don't use TikTok is because you can all do it in short format. So it's like mobile phone sort of screen. Whereas here, it's like widescreen. And I like making widescreen based videos. And plus you can make it a heck of a lot longer than three minutes anyway. So that's reason number one. And it's where um, reason number two is that there's going to be controls on that website that's going to be different to YouTube's anyway. <laughs> so that's why. The other day, I came across this so-called artist on TikTok and they were like saying, oh, how to draw art. And guess what they did? They went around tracing right over someone else's work anyway. It's like, that's not how artwork works. Well, what I mean by that is like, that's not how you learn how to draw at all. That's like not very good advice at all. And it's where other people agree, by the way. But it's where the problem is that people are flying like saying, no, it's okay to trace. So it's like, I don't understand why. The only time it's okay to trace is if you're an absolute beginner and you're not going to pass it off as you're on online, that kind of thing. Or even offline. Or you just admit to saying, okay, this is a tracing thing. I'm going to throw this away. I'm going to do it without tracing. That's fine. But just don't be like that one TikToker and just go around making videos where you just trace something. I saw someone else do this with a Night Tick logo saying, oh, this is how you draw. And this was on YouTube like ages ago. It was like back in 2008, I think. Yes, I've been living that long. So, yeah. It's just like, just please don't trace unless you're a beginner. After about five years, you totally won't need to trace. I mean, big name artists like Mark Crilly and um, some normal artists would never ever trace ever. So yeah, that. Right, I think for episode eight, which is this one, um, I don't think I'm gonna get both legs done. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is do more of this the rough way, then color the upper half of my character's legs and then finish it off that way. <laughs> it's because once I made this video, it was on a male character of mine and it's where it was like 57 minutes long and it only got this many views and I'm like thinking, yeah that's fair. <laughs> And then suddenly when my videos are shorter, suddenly it gets way more views. So I thought, right, I'm not making a 57 minute art video anymore, <laughs> as far as I know. Besides, um, people have said this, right, 
Um, now, obviously, I've not been able to monetize my channel yet, despite I have over 2,000 subscribers now, and it's where um, it's where the biggest problem with making long videos is that people who are able to monetize their channels uh, usually put like five or six ads in like an hour-long video, whereas if you make a video that's like 10 minutes long, you can only fit like one advert in, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So it's like, and you know, ads tend to get in the way. But you just hate those unskippable ads like the Snickers advert where it's like 20 seconds long. Yeah, I remember having to have to watch the same Snickers advert on YouTube 12 times in a row. Yes, I counted. And it was like an unskippable Snickers ad. It was the same one over and over and over again. I think I was watching someone else's playlist on a game. I can't remember what it was, but it was definitely the Snickers advert. You know, the one where... There's a lady in the room and then they turn into a man at the end after eating a Snickers bar. It's that one. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, definitely be careful of the free transform tool. Um, yeah, I don't think the box method is that helpful, honestly. <laughs> well, it's probably not for me, but it's probably for other people. Uh, I swear, yeah, that Snickers advert is just well annoying. Yeah, I knew I'd end up changing that knee up. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't make sense to make the knee face forwards and yet the shoe is like diagonally left. So yeah, I'm going to move that knee up. I'm probably going to change this knee a little bit more because it's going to be a little bit shading on that. Uh, oh, I put it in the wrong colour. <laughs> there we go. Uh, uh, yeah, that definitely looks a bit better. Now you're probably thinking, why are you making it a red stroke line so it won't get in the way of the green stroke lines? It's a little bit confusing because there's a thick green line, which is the line of action. That's definitely been helpful. I know I've said that a bunch of times, but you know. Like I mentioned earlier, definitely be careful of the free transform tool because uh, you can get mixed up with rotating and skewing. Sometimes I use rotate and sometimes I use skewing. So yeah, just be careful because you might do unintended things by accident, costing time. Now, don't worry about this leg. This leg's going to look really bad at first. But I'm gonna fix it up afterwards, so yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna deliberately make this look a little, tiny bit fat at first, but I'll fix it afterwards. So you'll see in a few seconds that that leg will uh, definitely look better. <laughs> right? Yeah, it already looks a little bit better. A tiny bit anyway. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, that's another thing, right? And um, there's still a few art techniques that are from other people I've still not tested out yet, so I don't know if I want to do that in episode nine or not. I might do it. I might not. But yeah, um, oh yeah, make sure that you save your work because uh, just in case there's like a uh, power cut. <laughs> Once one of my backups uh, actually got corrupted, but fortunately I had a backup from like uh, a few days back, but I only lost about one hour's worth of work, so drawing work anyway. But yeah, it was basically on one of my other characters called Megumi from one of my other animations anyway, so you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going to colour code this and turn this purple so that I can double click it more easily. Yeah, um, just be careful when drawing boots because sometimes you can draw one that looks too big compared to the other. So yeah, just be careful of that. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I'm just scrolling up and down to make sure that it actually looks alright. Yeah, I think I'll go do a little bit of colouring. Uh, oh yeah, just be careful of layers. I know layers exist in... Um, What's it called? Clip Studio 16. I've not used it, but I've seen other people use it. I can see why people love this, and yes, they use layers as well, so just be careful. I usually make the stroke lines black when I'm actually done with them. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to actually show your support, you may take like, share, or subscribe to my channel. You can even do all three of them if you want to. So yeah, and with that, I'll end up the video. So thanks you for watching.